Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of Channel Your Light, Own Your Intuitive. Today, we are talking about something that most of you are familiar with. However, we are going to go deeper. We're going to talk about cord cutting, when it works, why it works, why it doesn't work, and also tips and tools to move it through a deeper expanse. Most of you who are highly acutely sensitive to energy, those of you who are continuing to unfurl your energetic and spiritual journey and path, you will notice the more awareness you begin to have, the more dimensions you see from, the more you are able to sense, see, feel, and know the beings of energy that are moving around you all the time. Energy is fluid and always changing. Cord cutting, clearing energy. These are important tools for spiritual hygiene for all of us to have in our tools, in our toolboxes, sorry. And in addition, this is really important for those of you who are very acutely sensitive, who sense energy that is dark, dense, and heavy on the daily. Perhaps you are sensing high frequency vibrations on the daily, both ends. This video is specifically to cover some of the basic teachings that I teach in terms of energy, energy boundaries, energy etiquette, how to understand the deep fluidity of energy. I'm hearing the origination. If we understand the base root foundation of energy and how it works, it changes how we move energy, how we view it, how we perceive it, and how we sense it. Here's why this is important. For me on my journey, cord cutting, saging, clearing my energy, saying a prayer, things like that. I can do those things and they work and they are effective. However, they were only ever effective for a couple of hours until it got to the point where they weren't effective at all. They did nothing. I was dealing with something much bigger, much deeper, much more skilled and definitely not of this 3D physical realm is how I would like to put that. This is especially going to be poignant for those of you who feel you have been targeted or who are so acutely sensitive that you find it difficult to go into public places or engage with people who are not of a higher frequency. Side note, I'm being told for a message for somebody who is the latter, I'm being told to tell you, you people can only come to you through unconditional love. Anyone else will be repelled or removed. You must. Be engaged with people who are at a frequency or at the level that you're at. Otherwise, you will find it extremely difficult. This is also why you have had to isolate or be alone. The kitten here is tapping on the feather beside me that's hanging from the moon. So whomever that is, just recognize that you are coming into soul pods or groups of people who align with your frequency or have a higher frequency, both and I'm hearing. And this is important for you to recognize uh, that this has just been part of the learning journey, understanding discernment, understanding your own energy in order to get you to the people who are aligned with it. And I'm hearing you will be planted or supplanted in a specific location where you will be of the most help, but also aligned with those who are on par is what I'm hearing, on par with your frequency, your vibration, your energy, all of those things. Whoever that message is for, all that is coming. I'm hearing the song, lean on me, way on us strong. That's the song that's going with that or the lyrics that are specifically for you. I love spirit. I love songs. Anyways, <laughs> back to cord cutting. Now, cord cutting, I want you to look at it in the context of weeds. If we look at dandelions, which I personally don't think are weeds, but that's just my perspective and my opinion. For the purposes of really outlaying how this works, why it works, and what it looks like and understanding the root base of it or the seed of it, we're going to use dandelion as the weed. When we go out into the garden or onto our grass, depending on the person, nobody cuts the weed halfway through the stalk. We're just gonna lop the top of the dandelion off here and we're gonna leave the roots and we're gonna leave the seeds of the dandelion. Essentially, when most people are cord cutting, that's what they're doing. You're cutting off a cord. If we have a weed and we're cutting it off at the stalk, but we're leaving the root in there, make no mistake that weed is going to grow back. It was seeded deep in the depths of the dirt and that weed is rooting itself and now it's growing up to the surface those roots are still there. 
that dandelion, that weed is going to continue to grow back. In addition, when we're talking about energy and cord cutting, if I have cut an energetic cord with someone and I have left the roots there, there is an easy transference or a way to continually flow through ACA cords because I still have this piece here that's still engaged in my energy and the roots are entangled from the original seed, transference, binding, maybe it's just a relational thought forms, energy feelings, all of those things transfer through energetic cords. Every time someone thinks of you or focuses on you or you have a codependency relationship or you're learning opposition lessons, you create a cord. When you focus on me, you have the ability to create an energetic stream of energy, vice versa. If I'm focused on someone, I also have the ability to create an energetic stream of energy, whether it's thought forms, sexual energy, focused energy, spell casting, all of those things. They're all associated with thought forms and imagination. This is how we create worlds. Now, if you're like me, I am always, always remove other people from my energy. I do not want the transference of others and I do not want my energy to transfer to them. This is in regular everyday everyday living, right? People will come across it at the grocery store. When we go out to a function, sometimes it's when we're with our family members. For each of you, it will be slightly different. When we cut cords, the reason it doesn't work is because you're dealing with the symptom or what's on the surface versus the actual roots. If you want to cut, cut cords. Technically, what we should be doing is cutting the cord then we're going to pull out the roots, unentangling it from our energy, dissolving it, transmuting it. We're then going to seal the auric tears, holes, and weaknesses in our auric field. This is why we tighten our aura so that it has a stronger shielding boundary and it's not flowing everywhere all the time. Now, here's what's also important about this. Once we remove the roots, the person or the experience or the past or the energy or the thought forms has a much more difficult time reattaching or trying to stream through your energy. One, there are no roots there to easily attach to. The root has been removed. The root is the reason. The root is the foundation. The root, if it still is maintained in your energy, it very easily can others stream through that are a match to that toxic root. I want to say toxic because for some of you on here, it's very toxic or it has to do with targeting. So let's continue to move on. After you remove the root, you can do this through your mind. You can do this through a vision. You can do this through intention and through thought forms. Visual The ability to visualize what you are doing it as you are doing it calling in your team, your I am presence is much more powerful. We're gonna to touch on that piece at the end, why that's important. So once we've removed the roots outside of our energy, we now have a space in our energy where those roots, those cords, that person's energy, that circumstance, whatever it is, that was taking up space in your energetic fields. And when you remove the roots, it's now gone, which means you have free space. What do you want to fill the free space with so that that energy has nothing to attach to anymore? You need to fill it with your I am presence. You need to fill it with free space energy, a life force energy, chi. You need to fill it with your own essence. You need to light it up with the gold light, with blue divine power. I have the cosmic physician here. He says, once you remove something from your energy, thank you. Once you remove something from your energetic field, there is a created space. Most times, people will often remove something from their field, but forget to fill it, seal it, heal it, and hold it, and then tighten and shield it. Because of this, other energies see that open space and easily move through the auric fields, whether it is through the consciousness or through the energetic planes. It can then easily find that empty free space, because that's what it is, to reattach, to reroute. The cosmic physician says, when you are removing roots, call 
If you call, I will answer. Call on the cosmic physician. Call on your team. Call on those in the energetic and spiritual planes who are here to aid you in ascension and help you master your energy. This really is about mastering energy, how your energy works, what it impacts it positively, and what impacts it negatively, how to come into the full presence of your own energy. When you are full in your own energy and you have tightened auric shield, when you are pulling in your energy, it is very difficult for low dense vibrational negative energies to attach to you, to root to you, or to, I want to say it's almost like the mirrors are automatically there. It just bounces off. So if you're wondering about mirrors, that is actually in a previous video. I will link that above. Projections, reflections, and mirrors. So that you can understand that component of it. So when we talk about flushing out the roots, we then fill it, heal it, seal it. You can do it with Reiki energy. You can do it with purging. Because here's the thing. Once you cut a cord and you pull out the root, the thing that allows it to grow, and you start to heal and seal your energy, you're going to go through a period of healing. You cannot heal from anything toxic in your energy that binds you, that attempts to control you, that negatively impacts your energy. You can't heal from that if it's still within you. So most of us are cutting cords and wondering why it keeps coming back. Sweetheart, we have the roots in us still. We have the very thing that allows it to grow and attach to. We have holes in our auric fields. This is like uh, understanding the deepest levels of energies. Your energetic field, you are the most powerful when you are in your I am presence, when you have hold and healed, where there is no space for something of a lower dense vibrational energy to move into your fields. You cannot heal from something if it is still entangled in your energy. That's like trying to heal from cancer and having cancer being poured into your body at the same time. One foot on the gas pedal, one foot on the brake. It just doesn't work that way. So when we cut cords, I will recommend, I recommend you go a little bit deeper, cut the cord, pull out the roots, disentangle it, transmute it. Ask for help from your team if you need to. Like these are just basics of mastering your own energetic boundaries. You're gonna pull at the roots. Then you're going to go through a period of healing it. Now that it's been removed, now you can actually heal. You may find you are fatigued. You may find you suddenly have a lot of energy because you no longer have other people pulling down on your energy or trying to attach or latch onto it. There's that as well. Each of you will experience it differently. In addition, the cosmic physician says this, once you have done that piece of holding and healing and replacing that free space in your energy with your own essence, it allows for a sudden flow through. For those of you who are repeatedly targeted, this is a very different type of energetic influence and impact. It is, it is very specific it targets specific areas of the brain. They use specific rituals and ceremonies, very specific words. I am talking about mind control. I am talking about targeting people's energetic fields. I'm talking about targeting specific energetic centers within the body. So these are the chakra energy centers. These are speaking words over people, through them, at them and to them. It is dampening your energy so that, here's the last part that we want to go back to, I'm hearing your I am presence. When we are clearing energy, if you have been inundated and you are exhausted and you have these toxic weeds in there and you have this energy that's relentlessly coming at you or projecting at you or targeting you, whether it's people you know or people you don't know, at the end of the day, when I am exhausted, this makes you feel exhausted emotionally, mentally, physically, energetically, and sometimes spiritually draining. They can cast things that attempt to block, overshadow, that blocks your connection. You can have fluid energy moving through that blocks it or clouds it or confuses it. These things are very important. We're kind of jumping here, I feel like, back and forth. We're going to do a once over at the end that makes it simple, clear, and decisive is what I'm hearing. Ava says, yes, mom, it's very important, but these nuances are also important to understanding the frequency and basis of our own foundation. Because we get tired, because we are 
either relentlessly being targeted, we're inundated with familial relationships or intimate relationships, any type of a relationship or being constantly in and around a lot of people or people who take from your energy or attach to it or latch on or who are relentlessly targeting it for nefarious purposes is what I'm hearing. Regardless of what that is, sometimes we get to a point where we're so exhausted that when we go to clear it, we're not in our full I am presence. We're at half, half the cup, half the cup. Maybe it's you're at only a quarter of the cup. Maybe you're at like an eighth of your cup. It is much more difficult to clear energy when you are not in your full power and you have literally been dragged down, pushed down, tamped down, or have all this sh shit in your energy, your energetic fields. This takes away from your I am presence. These are the times where I do it with someone else. Lean on me. Their energetic uh, power that is separate from mine that has been targeted or is exhausted or needs to replenish its cup. Sometimes three by three, when we gather in three or more, the power is amplified. This means sometimes we need other people to help to push out the energy so that we can ground in our I am presence. It's very difficult to clear relentless, dense, heavy, negative energy when it is all the time. It is repetitive. You still have the roots entangled in you and you are absolutely exhausted. These are the times I would recommend that you have somebody do it with you. Someone help you to just hold space as the two of you together speak out the commands, uh, move through the cord cutting, visualize together. Your consciousness can move together to amplify this, the on the kid, the uh, and being shown this, it's like a magnet. It becomes a vortex of energy. Um, again, I'm hearing lean on me. That's what we need sometimes. No man is an island. Yes, we're all powerful. Yes, we're all in our I am presence or moving towards that. But when you start to become acutely aware of energy, you become acutely aware of what's in your energy, what's negatively impacting you, what feels good, what doesn't feel good, to the point that there's no mistaking it. The stark contrast is so intense. So when you are clearing your energy, I always, always tell my clients in that, do this process over here. You're gonna go along the whole thing, do the process. If you feel that it did not work, if you feel that you are too exhausted and you didn't get the result you needed or you simply don't have it in you, come back and we'll do it together. Because I know when we combine our energy, it will easy peasy, done. Again, lean on me when you're not strong. That's the song coming through for somebody on here. If you have tried everything to eliminate, to transmute, to shield yourself from dark, dense, negative energy, you likely would benefit from a deep dive quantum spiritual clearing. For those of you who have tried this on your own and have struggled with this, or it is a relentless, or you are specifically being targeted by dark energies, quick side note, if you need help, the help is there. You simply need to go to the link in the video description box. Now, your I am presence is powerful. When it is dimmed, you're not in your full energy, you're not in your full power. Working in the energetic field can sometimes be convoluted. It can be difficult when we're not at our full power. Once we have cleared and sealed and tightened and shielded and healed those areas, there's no longer anything for it to attach to. But this is not a one and done. Most people think, and I did too, I used to get so irritated because I, in my mind, the little Aaron, I used to think I should be able to clear my energy once, have my strong bubbles of protection, whatever it is for everybody, and it should be done, and that should be permanent. And the universe laughed at me. <laughs> the universe laughed at me and said, well, you forgot the fact that energy is fluid and always changing. You are always coming into contact with other people's energy through your everyday experiences, through online, through entities that are disembodied, through spirit, through me, mom. These are all different frequencies and energies. The very idea that I should be able to do it once and I am done doesn't really fit how energy works. Um, it doesn't really fit the time-space continuum because we're always evolving. The only constant is change. 
once I accepted this, and this is particularly true for those of you who are uh, inundated, uh, targeted, any of those aspects, you have to have a spiritual hygiene ritual or process. And sometimes we, we fall off the back of the wagon. It's true, like anything. Consistency and repetition is your best friend. Once you have fully shielded and cleared your energy and gotten everything out, you've tightened your auric field, all of those different things, you need to consistently, anytime something comes in, whoosh, move it away. Here's the other thing about energy that you need to understand. Once you have cut cords, remove the roots, healed and hold that area, tightens your auric field, removing all holes, tears, and weaknesses, and then shielded. Once you have done that, your awareness of when other people's energy signatures show up becomes intense. And when I say intense, I mean the second a name shows up, a person shows up, a targeter shows up, you will know it. The purpose of this is not that, oh my God, why is this happening again? Because you just took your power away. The purpose is, ah, there it is, immediately. Immediately remove it, immediately. That's the purpose of acute awareness, is to be able to identify the energy signatures of embodied spirit, you and I, disembodied spirit. And there's many disembodied spirits, whether you look at it as guides, angels, entities, whatever level they are coming from. It's about having an awareness of energy. The more aware you are is actually your superpower, even though it has felt like a burden I'm hearing for some of you. It is your superpower because once you are in your I am presence and you understand the facets and how energetic fields work, it empowers you to be able to dismiss, transmute, I do not consent, and remove immediately. That's a superpower. It's only a burden. That's why I say own your intuitive. What is what is this channel? Channel your light. Own your intuitive. This is what I teach. If you do not own your intuitive gifts, it will own you. And that is when it feels like a burden. It is confusing. It is difficult. It is highly emotive. It does not feel good. A burden is basically what I'm seeing. I'm seeing somebody carrying like boxes of other people's energy on your shoulders. This is your superpower. You simply need to attune to it to understand it and recognize it's a superpower, friends. Once you have removed the boxes, dropped them off where they belong, ripped out the roots, instead of just cutting off the top of the stalk and saying, oh, it's done and wondering why it keeps coming back. This is very important for somebody on here. Your struggle with energy has been significant. The dark energy series that I'm sharing shortly with you that we've been working on and I'm excited about, that touch on illuminating all of these different facets of how energy works based on my own experiences, based on my guides and the legions of light and the white brotherhood and all these Ashtar commands and all the things that I've learned along my journey that I never expected to learn. The reason I sh want to share these things is most of the time when we take intuitive classes and we just open up, it's wonderful, and we, we're at this step where it's amazing and there's synchronicities. But as you continue to move further along the ascension steps, you start to become more aware of different things. You start to feel, sense, know, and see, and hear a multitude of other things that most don't talk about. And perhaps they do, and I've just not come across them, or perhaps they're out there. That's very true, I'm sure. I am not the only one. But without these teachings, people start to go up the spiritual path or the ascension path, and they get to a point where it's so heavy and so burdened, and nobody can explain to them what's going on, that we stop there or we get dragged down there, and we never get to move up our full path of ascension. This is done intentionally, and sometimes it is unintentionally. We just don't understand it. This and that are true. Without a, some sort of a map or an understanding of how do I get from A to Z, if I get to C or D, and all of a sudden there's nothing there, there's no one who understands, and you get clobbered, I'm hearing inundated, it's very difficult to come through that. That's why we have guides, that's why we have help. I have a little help from my friends, is what I'm hearing. That's why we have help. Your I am present, this is your superpower. Right now what we're doing is we are unentangling so we have absolute clarity, removing the overshadow, including any inner shadow and root that can attach to you. Thought forms as well, mind control, targeting, 
this on a, there's just so much i can't wait to share that energy series with you guys and even though it says it's the dark energy what's the purpose of the light we're channeling our light and when you have a massively bright light or you have acute sensitivities to energy you're going to see the darkest stuff the densest stuff you're going to sense it you're going to illuminate what is down at the bottom of that well that a little flashlight can't go down and see that's true that's because this is your superpower. It is not a punishment. It is not meant to hurt you. It's actually to empower you and help you. Eva says, go back, mom. We're going to go through the whole thing. Cut the cord at the stalk. It's easier to rip out a root when you've separated them for a moment of time. So energetically cut your cords. Visualize this. Intend this. See, you may see an theme that is embedded with quantum healing codes. You may see Archangel's, Archangel Michael's sword. He will often come in and cut cords for me. When Archangel Michael cuts cords for me, that's just the beginning. That's the first step. It's the first step, friends. Cutting the cord is the first step. You need the other three and four steps. <laughs> it's important to effectively eradicate, transmute, and shield so that it's not bogging you down. First step, cut the cord. Second step, Go into the roots, ask for your team's help. Go into the roots and pull it out. You will know when it's done. It'll be more than a feeling. Once you have removed the roots, disentangled them, they were transmute them, dissolve them, see them disappear, see them fall into the spiritual garbage can, says Ava. See them move away. I want you to then, third step, you're now going to focus your energy on healing this energy, calling in your I am presence, calling in the cosmic physician. Move through the quantum field of energy and heal those. I'm, I'm hearing heal the spaces that are now free of that toxicity and fill them with your own divine essence, your energy, your love, your divine power, your divine wisdom. That's the third step. Fourth step, you're then going to, as you're in your full I am presence at that point, you are going to, at the geisha na'a, you can ask the cosmic physician to help with all of this. Not a problem. That's why I'm here, I'm hearing him say. Then you're going to sweep the auric field and subtle energy bodies. When you don't have that toxicity in you, you have way more power and clarity. Sweep all the energetic fields, coat them. There's so many different ways to do this, my friends. Coat them. Sweep the energetic fields, sweep the aura, sweep the subtle energy bodies. Then you're going to move to the outer shield. You're going to shield it, removing any holes, tears, and weaknesses. When you shield your energy, you can do this again in a multitude of ways. I use four shields, but I deal with people on a daily basis. I'm not just shielding for me, I'm shielding and cloaking them in light so that we can engage and do the work that we need to do without the interferences or interruptions that's why it's effective so the fourth step is shielding tighten your auric field and shield it the tighter your auric field is the denser your energetic subtle energy bodies are and i don't mean dense as in low frequency i mean dense as in superpower it's like taking this beautiful giant ball of light and condensing it down into such a solid form that it spins and vibrates so powerfully. That's what that is. You're magnetizing, calling in all of your energetic centers in a free flowing fluid energy within your fields. So if you wondered why cord cutting doesn't work, or if you have felt like it doesn't work for you, it's usually because you only cut the cord and did the first step. You gotta have the second step and the third step and the fourth step in order for it to be deeply effective. And after that, after you have done that, done a deep cleanse, a deep clearing, and a healing and shielding, once you have done this, you do need to, on a consistent basis, have a spiritual hygiene ritual. Some people use water. Some people, before they finish their day, before they lay their head upon their bed, they will do a quick, I'm seeing a quick energy check-in. Is there any residue? Is there any 
felt, I'm seeing little puffs of smoke, almost like a uh, dark smoke, little puffs of smoke in somebody's energy. You must sweep it away. We don't sweep it away when we're not aware of it. When you clear your energy to this extent on these deep levels, and I say deep as in all of your energy, mastering your energy, when you do it in that way, your clarity allows you to easily identify things that are there that maybe perhaps when you were inundated or had all the roots in your energetic fields, you wouldn't have been aware of it because it became part of your energetic field. Side note, so let's talk about manifesting just really quickly. When we have other people's energy in our energetic fields and their toxic roots in our energy as well, entangled, and you go to manifest something, you attempt to manifest, whether it's a, you know, a new job, a new career, whether you're trying to stay on the track or thought tracks of positive thinking, keeping a high vibration. If this stuff is in your energy, guess what? When you go to manifest, you're gonna wonder why you didn't manifest the thing that you wanted to manifest, that you were focused on. That's because your whole energy manifests. And if somebody else's garbage is in your energy, entangled, bound, hooked, or rooted in your energy, you will actually manifest pieces of that with it because that's part of your energy field. This is why energy boundaries and energy etiquette is of utmost importance particularly through the Great Awakening, because so many people are coming online to the awareness of this energy, and it can be chaotic, and it can be messy. And that's putting it nicely. So when we go through this process, the more acutely aware we become, we also have to have the ability to disentangle. Are we all one? Are we creators of our own world? Absolutely. But if you are all one and the people you are attached to or are in your energetic fields are at like a too dense, negative, heavy, toxic, vibrational energy, and you're trying to maintain your 20, it's not, you can't do that when they're in your energetic fields, when their roots are there, when they have seeded so deep in there and you cut the stalk off, but you didn't go in and pluck at the seed that created the roots to grow and the stalk to come. It's just nakaaya. I feel like that's all we need to cover in this video. This is specifically for somebody who's struggling with that energy. Again, if you go through this process and you don't feel that it was really scraped out the scraped out the energy and cleared and clarified it, it's a deep dive. <laughs> the experiences that I have had and that people who have had doing this are jaw dropping. Uh, awe-inspiring and shocking. No two are the same. It is a pretty incredible experience. So if you feel the need to, if you feel called to, the link for that again is in the video description box below. I do recommend you attempt to do this on your own and follow this process. Cut the cord, first step. Second step, go in and pull out the roots and transmute them. Third step, you're then going to hold and heal and focus divine power and healing energy and filling those spaces where the roots were with your own essence. Fourth step, you're going to sweep your energetic fields, your subtle energy bodies. You're going to seal any holes, tears, or weaknesses in your auric field. You're then going to shield. That's the final step. Sweeping, repairing, shielding. Those are three steps in and of themselves. But usually once you get to that point, it goes so fluidly, it's all as one. So I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel. Have you guys found that cord cutting doesn't necessarily work for you like I did? Have you found that your acute sensitivity to dark energy has felt like a burden? Like it's owning you rather than you being like, wow, I have this great superpower. It's like, oh my God, I have this burden. <laughs> I've been through that. I totally understand that on a multitude of levels and experiences. So let me know in the comments. Let me know too, come back to this. Did it help? Did you try it? What works for you? Those things are important. When something works for you, acknowledge it. It is ramping up your I am power, your presence, and your knowing. I hope that this helped. I trust that it did. I know it helped me profoundly when spirit walked me through this and started delivering pieces or a little keys to put all together. That's what I love about spirit. Anyways, friends, I hope you have an incredible day, an incredible evening, whenever you're catching this. I am wishing you a much love, peace, a light, transcendence, healing, and empowerment. And of course, 
if you are a divine feminine and you wish to join our community where we do fun stuff like this all the time. We have a lot of teaching, channeling from guides and masters, and of course our loved ones in spirit as we move along the ascension path. The link to join our channel, Your Light Tribe, is below in the video description box. And time is running out. Space and time is running out to join us in Costa Rica. This is happening at the very end of July. I am so excited. We are all excited. There's only a couple spots left. Only a couple spots left. If you wish to join us, go on a spiritual expansion, escape the chaos, reground into your inner peace, your power, and activate your gifts and an expansion, please join us. The link to join that is in the video description box below as well. And until next time, beautiful souls, I'm sending you much love.